Okay. So the next problem is the thirtieth one, but actually uh, to solve the problem, you also have to take a look at uh, problem 29. Now here we have a sphere with a spherical cavity, and uh, the outer radius of this thick spherical shell is given to be R0. The inner radius uh, is R1, this is the vector, so let's put it this way. And we are told that there is some charge, Q, that's uniformly distributed over this. And in addition to this capital Q, uniform distributed over this spherical shell, at the very center, we have a charge small q. And we are asked the electric field at R uh, for three regions. So uh, for the inner cavity, uh, for R1, R0, for inside this shell, which is, by the way, uh, not a conductor, it's an insulating shell. And finally, uh, for R larger than R0, so outside this. Okay? So in all of these cases, what we are going to do is that we are going to draw a spherical surface, a hypothetical spherical surface that's concentric uh, with this spherical shell. And we are going to uh, apply Gauss's law. Right? So we're always going to look at this. It's a dot product, Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. And in all of those cases, this integral is going to be trivial to, trivial to take because for any spherical shell, because our problem is spherical symmetric, the magnitude of the electric field on the uh, shell surface is going to be constant. These two are always going to be parallel to each other. The electric field is always going to be in the radial direction. And your surface element, because you're drawing a concentric circle is going to be also in the radial direction. Uh, well, the, uh, the, the outward direction for that spherical surface is going to be in the radial direction. So this dot product is going to be a simple product. And furthermore, uh, we can take this electric field strength out. Okay, so this is always going to be the case. We are always, and then we can take the integral. It's just going to be the, uh, it's just going to be the surface area of the hypothetical surface that you have just drawn. Right, so for example, we can draw something here for the first part. This is going to have some radius r. And uh, we just go through these steps. So this dot product, because the electric field here is going to be in radial direction, simply vanishes. It becomes a simple product. And the electric field is of uh, constant strength. I can take this out. And I can write the integral. So this first becomes this. And then this becomes that the a. So uh, let's, yeah, let's write this E of R. Uh, it's, a, it's going to be a function of this distance R, and this is going to be an integral over sphere radius R times dA, and this is going to become E of R times 4 pi R square. Okay. And in every case, this is going to be equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. So you need to find the Q enclosed on, on these uh, different cases. So for the first one, for this case, this Q enclosed is trivial. It's just Q. Right. Uh, everything else is just outside. For the R larger than R0 case, this is also trivial. Q enclosed is going to be Q plus capital Q. For this one, it's going to be something in between. Okay? As uh, you go from R1 to R0, uh, the Q enclosed, the enclosed charge within your hypothetical spherical surface is just going to increase. Uh, but we can simply write this. So for any, uh, for any portion, the enclosed charge in that portion is going to be proportional to the volume of that spherical shell we are taking inside. Uh, and we, we, can just, uh, we can just use a proportionality. Right, so the Q enclosed here in this case is going to be proportional to the capital Q. So I'm going to take uh, a spherical shell that's four thirds pi uh, R Q minus I'll subtract off the 
inner shell. So this will be the, if I draw a hypothetical spherical surface this way, this will be the volume here. Okay. And the full volume of the shell is going to be four thirds divided by uh, our zero cube minus four thirds pi uh, R1 cube. Okay, so the denominator is the volume of the whole shell. And so the extra charge that is coming from the shell is going to be the ratio of these two volumes times the total charge uh, in, the, in the full shell. Uh, to this, we are going to add the Q at the center. So for the intermediate case, this will be the enclosed charge. And for all of them, for all of these cases, we can calculate the electric field by saying that the electric field times four pi r squared is equal to the Q enclosed, these three values uh, divided by epsilon naught. Okay. So it's a little bit tedious perhaps, uh, but it's very straightforward. And certainly there's, there's going to be a lot of cancellation like this. Uh, four third pi's cancel all over the place here. Okay. okay. Um, so I actually want to say a couple more things uh, about Gauss's law uh, as applied to systems like this. So when we are writing Gauss's law, we are only taking the charge enclosed. Right? So we are completely excluding uh, the charge that's outside. Now, does this mean that, uh, that, that they have no influence? Now, that's not so, because on the left-hand side, the electric field uh, is the total electric field. So that the electric field could have contributions from charges that's coming from outside. It's just that the uh, Gauss's law as written and as it works as, uh, as nature behaves uh, only includes the enclosed charge, the charge that's enclosed in the hypothetical surface over which you are taking this integral. Okay. Uh, so what does this mean? Now how does the, for example, charge outside, so if, if I change the charge outside, could I solve the problem exactly like this? Right. So if I just carved out a portion of the spherical shell, for example, uh, will it remain the same? Will the output uh, will the calculations remain the same? No. Okay, it will actually have an influence because uh, remember, uh, when I'm going from here to here, when I said that the electric field is going to be in radial direction, uh, I use spherical symmetry. Right? And that's essential. If, uh, unless uh, I have spherical symmetry, I cannot presume that the electric field is going to be radial direction, and then uh, this dot product is not going to simply turn into a product. So the whole solution will, will change. This will be a very laborious, uh, laborious calculation. Right, so the outside charges do have an effect. They produce the electric field, and the electric field inside this integral is the whole electric field. It's the electric field produced by all charges. But on the right-hand side, the charge that you include in this equation is only the charge enclosed by the surface over which you're taking this integral. And that's, a, that's an important point. As I said, if this charge configuration was different, even if the difference was just for the part that's outside this uh, hypothetical, hypothetical surfaces I'm drawing, uh, it would still have an effect. It will change my calculations. It won't be this simple. Okay? We are not going to deal with uh, these very complicated um, charge distributions in this course, but it's something to keep in mind. Right? This is somewhat accidental that we can do it uh, this easily. Uh, the general case of uh, taking this dot product and taking this integral could, could be very, very complicated indeed. <laughs>